Welcome back, everybody. Just my mic here. All right. There we go. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for us to continue Hellion. Now, when we left off, I had been going through some stuff to do when you've died, how to sort of recover from that. And I had originally suggested going through and doing a fresh start, but that is actually, I found a better way of doing things, which is to abandon ships and destroy them and then summon new ones. So I'll, I'll walk you through what I, what I was doing and how successful it was. Let's check the air quality here. Yeah, air quality is pretty much terrible. So I checked in with the, uh, the, the dev servers and the, uh, the, the dev team and stuff and some of the other testers and found out that the issue with the life support is actually uh, a bug. These don't actually work right now. So we're going to just shut those off because they're a waste of power at this point. And the only thing we can do is use the air tank here to redo the, the air quality. <laughs> Hi, baby. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to vent the station here. So vent this one and this one and this one. Now the main room is venting. All right, so basically we're blowing out our our. No, go away, sweetie. We're we're blowing out our environment because the air has got too much carbon dioxide in it. So as soon as we can finish it, vent, let's vent this one as well. See if that speeds this process up here. It's almost done. All right, so it is now empty. And so now we're going to repressurize all sections of the ship. And that's going to repressurize with, see now the air quality is up to 92. So now we're gonna go through the same process here and vent all of the components of the ship here one by one to improve the oxygen quality. All right, so they're all vented, so repressurize the airlock and the prep room. And it looks like we have other people on, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to, um, let's vent the cargo bay and the bridge, because those two appear to be the ones in the worst condition here. And as you can see, it's actually draining my air tank up top. So this is not a, it's not a sustainable thing, but they'll patch it out eventually. So I'm not too worried about it. So it takes a little bit of time to vent these. And since we're not breathing in the, the room, the air quality remains decent here. Okay, so the bridge will be done here momentarily. Okay, so we're going to repressurize that room. Uh, that's not the best here. Oh, it's going up. All right. problem is going to be, okay, we're going to have to turn on the oxygen generator here to generate more air. So we're going to go ahead and kick those both on so that we'll have a good supply. Because the, this venting process is, is going to be costly until they fix it, just because of the amount of resources 
that are required. All right. And now we can start repressurizing the cargo bay. So while that's going on, let's go ahead and take our helmet up here. And as you can see, the air quality is now back in place. We're probably going to have to do this on a regular basis, but it's okay. So what I did was I summoned a rescue ship, drained everything out of it, resources, materials, and whatnot, and used the, those for manufacturing and refining and a bunch of other things so that I could basically resupply all of the stuff that I have. Uh, that has allowed me to get a fairly good supply of resources. Uh, I do need to move some deuterium into the ship, but I have a special can just for that on the ship that I've set aside. Uh, so now we're just filling in the air quality. Let's see here. Yeah, we're, we're filling up the, the air system, even though 4K is a, is a bit rough to do. Go ahead and dump the nitrogen in and the oxygen. All right, so that gives us a fairly good setup here. The ship has got a decent amount of fuel, so we're just going to get the air up a little bit. And, okay, we're going to shut these off now because we're going to waste too much resources if we don't. So, shut that down, shut that down. And this should allow us to reduce the amount of air saturation that we've got going on. See, it's, it's going down already, but let's check the, uh, the ship and see if that cargo bay is repressurized yet. Okay, yeah, cargo bay is repressurized. So we're going to go ahead and move over. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you all the materials that I got. It doesn't look like I got them. But you'll see I've got three rifles here fully loaded with a magazine in each of them. Uh, I was able to construct a whole bunch of ammunition. I made a couple of grenades. I got my suits all filled up there. And then we've got in here. We've got two more, pistols, two more rifles. One of them does not have ammo in it. Uh, I didn't get any extra ammo there, but in here I've got uh, two pistols, and there's a second type of pistol here. Like this one is not the one that you're used to seeing. This is this is the one that you can pick up put that way. But then this one is the heavy pistol. Looks completely different. Okay, pretty cool. So we've got those. They use the same ammunition either way. We've got the the two suits there. And then into the ship we go. In my badass power slide there. Uh, I've gotten parts. Whoa, that needs to be repaired. Holy, sh holy crap! Been gone for a day or so. Things are a little bit jacked up. I need to go back and do a repair. Uh, one thing you should always be ready to do at the beginning of your play sessions is do what I call a repair tour. You know, just sitting around doing nothing will have degraded your system to a, a certain point. So you're going to want to... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. All those ships being brought in had fuel cells. So I was able to collect a rather healthy supply of fuel cells full of resources. And that was uh, very, very useful. Did I name this one? No, I didn't. We'll name, we'll name it later. I honestly don't care right now. Uh, so let's see here. We got no extra pistols in there. We got one rifle with... Does this one have ammo? No, this one's empty. All right, so I'll have to grab some ammo. But... Uh, we got all the parts for the reactor here and all the parts for our solar panels, like you'll see all of our solar panels have parts. We're basically able to get all of our tier one part requirements 
for the ship taken care of through the use of the crafting system, uh, which was very, very useful. So, and then here's my reserve fuel here. I've got a, a thing of deuterium, hydrogen, and nitro. So basically engine fuels for the ship. I've got uh, a mine, two mining things with a bunch of drills, so I'll be able to do that. And then I was able to pick up about 10 of these little orange cans, which I'm gonna use. Uh, and then I've got a bunch of these guys here that I made. And that basically covers us for the basics of what we're gonna need. Now, based on what I was doing, I've realized that, oh, shoot, gotta go back down, forgot the door. I've realized that I need to go ahead and get uh, cargo bay and a command module that cannot wait any longer. So I'm going to have to get that done right away. So now, in order to sort of save the environment of my ship, oop. oh wait, I need one thing of ammo to load into my rifle, because there are other people playing on this on the server, but it looks like they're using dev commands, so I don't I will need to worry about running into them, because they'll just be spawning in whatever they want. They're probably doing a, a base building thing. Let's check for any other damage here real quick. All right, doesn't look like there's anything there. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and close the inner door. Push through to this one here. Close the inner door. Let's go get ourselves out of here. Okay, release. we are released. All right, and down we go. Perfect. All right. So the ship should be charged up. Let me check my uh, my power supply here. Okay. Yep, we're fully charged without the use of our other system. Uh, what is our hull like? We're at 100%, okay. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna go ahead and work on a command module first. That's our top priority. So first things first here. Let's go ahead and move away from the station. And so now, yep, we're pitching away from the station. Oops, hit the button to get out of the chair. Don't want to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick navigation. So we're going to go to Broken Marble because this is where we want to try and pick up a command module. Let's do a custom orbit. All right, and let's do one just outside of the debris field here. There we go. All right, so that should get us pretty well started. Let's go ahead and set that for our warp to target. Speed is too low. Okay, and warp fuel cell. Oh, forgot to turn the FTL on. Are we going to have enough time? Okay. And let's go ahead and aim ourselves at that location. Whoa! Aim ourselves at that location. And 
ready to go. So I think, based on the conversations that I've had, that the reason we crashed had something to do with that fabrication module and that it was not working correctly. So we may test that in the future, but I think I'll get a spare ship for that. I don't think that it's something that I'm going to risk my current ship with all of its materials and resources on a process like that because it's it's just too dangerous. So anyway, so the, the process that I did was, uh, if I wasn't clear before, is I summoned a ship, docked it to the docking port, pulled all of the materials and stuff out of it, and recycled most of them, along with pulling all of the resources I could out of the ship. Once I was done with it, I was able to go ahead and, and hit the self-destruct for the ship, cut it loose, let it drift away, and watch it explode before starting another one. The whole process, uh, if you're really, really fast, takes about 25, 30 minutes. So over the course of, you know, four or five hours, uh, I was able to, to do that about 10 times. This is actually the 10th ship that I pulled in, which is why I have all the, the fuel and everything that's in there. But I'm I'm hoping I, I'm I'm glad to see the uh, the fabrication stuff starting to come in. That's that's been a huge help because now you don't have to specifically raid for everything. You do have an option to do other stuff, which is good. Now among the the parts that we need so uh, for for base building because that's really where we're at at this point is that we've we've stabilized our situation we've got enough resources to operate for a short time but we don't really have enough room to store or maintain anything larger than a very minimal amount of resources so in order for us to move things along we're going to need to be able to upgrade what we have uh, and the first order of that business is to go ahead and get ourselves a, uh, a command module so that we can make a base that we are authorized at, that we own. And this will allow us to lock airlock doors so if somebody finds our base they won't be able to get in and if it will allow us also to do things like a fresh start to bring in another uh, another outpost module without losing the position of our base because it'll show up as an authorized place for us. So now let's see where this goes here. I'm going to go ahead and check my nav. Let's go ahead and run a scan now. Let's see if we pick up anything on the way in. Oh, goody. We've got a couple of things here. All right, so we've got corridor, inner module, command module there. CSM. Oh, cargo S module, or uh, uh, corridor S module. Another CM there. Military post, derelict, derelict. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, actually, wait a minute. This one almost kind of drifts out of. Let's go ahead and get this guy here. Let's warp to that one. Activate the fuel cell. And now we're going to have to turn on the reactor. And since we don't have any fuel in the reactor, we've got to go downstairs and fuel the reactor. So, fortunately, I kind of planned ahead for this. I honestly wish I had uh, 
Oop, taking damage. I wish that I had gotten more of these blue cans, but I didn't really have a place to, s to save them. So they were flopping around the inside of the station between ships. Uh, and I. Oh, dang it. Okay, go back down. Kind of wish that auto closed the door, but. Okay, fire up the reactor. Alright, so now we should be getting enough power. Go ahead and turn on our nav, cancel the previous one, target this, warp 2, fuel cells. We have enough power. Let's go ahead and drop these down a little bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's go ahead and bring this down to 3 minutes even. And now we're oh, taking a little bit of damage here. It's all right. Now it seems like when you warp, the objects around you also seem to get pulled along, which can be a little bit frustrating. So you can basically pull a debris storm with you rather than warping out of it. Now, with that being the case, we're going to try and uh, get through this pretty quickly. J for jump. And... Uh, so my goal is going to be to dock to this thing, get out of the debris, the debris field, and then uh, work from there in order to find a good warp position to take it back to my base. And then once we've got it attached, we can do a quick survey of all of the different parts and go from there. quieter on this video than on previous ones, but that's mostly just due to the the nature of there's not a lot to be said at this point. You'll you'll get to the point with this that you have a feel for the warping and the uh, the maneuvering. Especially if you take the time to, to learn to be a pilot in this game to get good at it. You can, you can get to be pretty spectacular. And it's going to be necessary because uh, one of the things that's in the roadmap is starship weaponry. So there's going to be exterior mounted weapons on some of these ships. They've already got uh, concept art for a small little one-man fighter craft, basically. That's probably going to be the equivalent of a uh, some kind of fighter, like a, like a strike craft or something. I'm not sure how they're gonna how they're gonna work it. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Oh, we're in the debris. We missed. Okay, let's run another scan here.
Okay. I'm not sure where that other one went to. But we're going to warp to the new one here. Initialize. That was very depressing. That's, see, that's dangerous right there. And we jump. Now we're probably going to keep taking hits because there's probably some debris in here with us. Hopefully, now that we're here, I probably got a bad return on that signal, and that's probably why uh, I didn't warp correctly to it. Let's hope that this one is a little bit better. So our range for a thousand kilometers. Uh, I hate that sound bug though. That sound bug is really annoying. Where you just have like a constant RCS sound. You can tell it's not actually going because I'm not actually losing RCS. It's just the, uh, the thing is doing its best to annoy the hell out of me. Oh, wow, 30 minutes and we've done virtually nothing. But the three, the three modules that we're going to try and get in the next uh, couple of videos, ooh, pardon me, is first going to be this command module. We're also going to try and get a power supply module and a cargo bay module. All of these things are very, very important for us in terms of making sure that we have a viable base. Now, we're probably going to want to also pick up an additional... Uh, docking port or two just to be on the safe side but for the most part those are things that are not a deal breaker as of yet we have the one that we need right now I would eventually like to add a few more docking ports so that I can add additional ships sort of like purpose-built ships so I might make like a raider ship and I might make a ship designed for running and mining and then I might make one that's just designed for towing uh, just depends or I might make one you know like a the difference is is that your your mining ship and your uh, your ship for rating have something strapped to the back of them it's a it's a useful trick. What you do is you, you take a ship. Okay, there we go. Ooh, five hundred meters. Not bad at all. Nice, nice parking job. Let's go ahead and approach this thing. Let's get into our docking cam, switch to the tail, and let's go for B port. And let's point this in the right direction. Alright, we're 
pointed right at it. Come on, stabilize. We're drifting a little bit here. Okay, distance is 200 meters. See what we're doing yet. Okay, let's roll this over. Oh, that is blinding. Okay, I see it now. Pitching the nose up. got some damage but we can work with that oh back it up back it up back it up okay bring it down bring it down gonna, this thing's gonna need some repairs and we'll need to rate it specifically Equalize that out and make an, an approach distance here. Oh, too fast, too fast, slow down. Perfect. So now navigations, home station. Told you you could be offline. Okay, cancel that. Drop that one down. Bring that one up. Okay, and initialize. So now we're going to go ahead and drag this thing with us back to station. Okay, that was effectively a really good quick snatch and grab. Uh, we're going to repeat the same process for our cargo bay and power supply. And I'm also going to go ahead and look for a few of the solar panel modules because those will help us augment our power without using too much of the act. In the meantime, I hope that you have enjoyed. Uh, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a great deal to let me know that I'm doing a good job for you. And it lets me know that this is content that you want to see more of. So until next time, I'm Rath, signing off. Have a good one, and I'll catch you on the flip side.